There's something we have in common today, all of us that are gathered here. Each and every one of us uh, have that in common as far as we've all had a mom, uh, grandmothers. Some of you, right now, you carry the memory, a precious memory of your mom. Others of you have, uh, have your mom with you to share today. I hope that you will give her an extra I love you if you have that opportunity today. And not just today, but to let her know how important she is to you. We thank each and every mom that's here today uh, for all that you mean in our lives. And some of you ladies are, aren't mothers, but you've been like mothers. And you've been like grandmothers to many of us. And for my family in particular, I can, I can say thank you for that, for my wife and I both, uh, especially for her being a long, long way from home. Many of you have, have been mom. You've been grandma to her in some very special ways some of you for many years. Also, there is a, uh, a special group of moms. I have friends that are uh, one of these moms. I have friends that uh, are, they are these kind of moms to their children. And these moms are so very special because this particular mom and, and dad uh, chose their child and taking nothing away from the biological mothers that the mom that uh, uh, adopts a little one and commits to give that same motherly love to a, to a child that she and dad chose. It's a great giver, a great giver of love, a great example, I think, today of our Heavenly Father that uh, adopts us into His family. Moms teach their children so much, especially in the, in the early years, those that study development of human beings tell us that, that a, a little one is this, that's born and they grow so fast, so fast. My, my grandson is a year old, and we've been able to watch him change and grow and uh, take multiple steps. That's just exciting things for an for a old grandpa and grandma and for mom and dad and everybody else. But children... Um, they say that in a very early age, uh, I've heard five, I've heard six, I've heard seven, but at a very, very young age, their developmental uh, of who they are as a human being is, is pretty well set. It's pretty well set of how they will handle the rest of their life. And moms deserve a lot of credit as how they shape those little lives and as they do that, they shape the society of, of the future. Um, you may remember an old song. I know different people recorded it, but my, my, in my head is Glenn Campbell singing, The hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. I thought about football. How about football for Mama's Day, huh? You know, uh, and, and also in other places, other sports, you got these big... Uh, uh, NFL players and, and you know they had the NFL draft this week so some of those guys that were you know barely able to eat in college last week now some of them millionaires but you know when little Johnny poor little Johnny, Johnny gets picked on so much poor little Johnny he makes it to the NFL and, and the camera zooms in on Johnny after he scores his touchdown and it comes in, and what does he say? Even if the microphone is not on, you can see his mouth move when the camera zooms in, and he says, Hi, Mom. Poor old Dad. Dad taught him all those moves and how to run fast and the discipline you need to be the good, you know, how to block, how to be tough and do all these things. But do you ever see a football player say, Hi, Dad. No way. It's always... Hi, Mom. There are great, lots of great mothers that we see in, in the Bible. We won't look at all of them this morning, but we can think of Moses' mother who did some very creative things to, to save his life. She did some very creative things so that she could still be a mama to little Moses. A guy named Samuel, whose 
whose mother so much wanted to have a son, and she said to God, if you'll give me a son, I'll give him back to you. And she did. So it's so many special moms there. We see even a great mother-in-law. Her name was Naomi. To a little foreign girl named Ruth. But a mom that I want us to kind of look at here for a moment is, is, was one of those chosen mothers, a very special mom, not because that she is set high on a pedestal, not because she has this glowing halo around her head, uh, but she was a special uh, young, young girl, I think, probably a young teen. Um, and probably the, the, the difference we see in this girl between her becoming a mom and any other mom is because, uh, if we skip the bio biology lesson, but she became a mom without uh, a man. She was still a virgin. No man was involved whatsoever. Let's look at Luke chapter 1, starting in verse 28. Let's look through her finding out about this. It says, The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. Now she did question. I mean, how about it, girls? Would, would this be kind of a rude awakening? Like, what's going on here? She questioned what's going what's to happen. She, more than any other person in the world, because probably a lot of other people rolled their eyes, but she knew, and she knew that she knew that she had not been with a man. And she questioned that. The angel said to her in the 37th verse that for nothing is impossible with God. And that's true. Nothing is impossible with God. And so this young lady... And I, I really think a young teen. We don't know, but I think she was young. With wisdom beyond her years, whatever they were, in verse 38 said, I am the Lord's servant. Mary answered, May it be to me as you have said. And then the angel left her. So she was quick to respond that she was willing to be this special mom. I thought last week... Uh, uh, if you were here and you saw the creative team do um, their production, their dial rod production, it's such a powerful message uh, of Jesus still being his mother's child, even on the cross. And uh, I think it was Abby. She was wrapped up pretty good. Was it Abby? Played Mary. Is that right? Uh, you know, it, it, she did such a great job, and, and to me, um, to depict... Mary, I think it was the most vivid picture I've ever had in my mind. I, I, I think in pictures, okay? I don't know about you, but I think in pictures. And that, the way she depicted a mom as, as, she, as she sobbed at the, at the foot of the cross. That was just one of those moments for me to, to, to do that visual look. Such a powerful message. Jesus looked down from the cross. Suffering physically, and I think suffering even more from the weight of the world, the weight of mankind upon his shoulders, considering all the ugly, despicable things that were laid on him. But even with all of that that he was carrying at that moment, his love, his divine love for his mother showed through. John 19, 26 says, when Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, and that was the disciple named John, he said to his mother, speaking to his mother, he said, Dear woman, here's your son. And from that day on, the scriptures tell us that John looked after Mary in his own home, looked after her. Another mother that I want us to consider today is, a, is an unnamed mother that we find in Proverbs 31, sometimes we call, the, we look at this, the Proverbs 31 woman. Uh, the, 
it's, it's a little debated over who, who wrote this. If, if Solomon did write this, we know who his mom was. And uh, it really doesn't matter. Some think that he did not write this. But, but this chapter does look at a, at a noble woman and a wonderful mother. Proverbs is, in, on our midweek Bible study, we've studied through Proverbs before. Every, every proverb, every verse. It is full of wisdom. It is full of, of knowledge. And in many of the places that we look in the book of Proverbs, we will see this important wisdom and the importance of, of a mom and her teaching in the home. Church is important. School is important. But nothing, nothing, nothing takes the place of the home. And when we look back, we can probably all see the kinds of things that, that we now consider a normal part of our life because of how we were raised. And a lot of that is, is the things that we learn from mom. Back in the very first chapter uh, of Proverbs, the writer says this in Proverbs 1, 8, and 9, Listen, my son, to your father's instruction, and do not forsake your mother's teaching. There will be a garland to grace your neck and a chain to a... To a to grace your head and a chain to adorn your neck. Mom's teaching is so important. And I know for me, after the influence of the Lord in my life, the greatest factor that helped me in my life and growing up and still as I grow today was my home life as a child. And my mom was a big, big part of my upbringing. Do not forsake your mother's teaching. Now, we get to Proverbs 31. Let's look at um, the last part of that chapter. You can go back and read all of that chapter later. But starting in the 26th verse, it says, She speaks with wisdom, and faithful instructions is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her the reward she has earned and let her work bring her praise at the city gate. Isn't that a great description? Isn't that a great description of a wise mother? Pay attention to her. Pay attention, and you're going to learn something. Her children call her blessed. Her husband praises her. The Christian mother that fears the Lord should be mightily praised, and she is to receive the reward that is due. Again, the love, the unconditional love of a mother is very, very close, I think, to the love that God gives to us and I know that all moms are not like that there are exceptions but there is no exception when it comes to God's love for us Jesus loved those that nailed him to the cross he cried over his own people you know we only see a couple of places recorded that Jesus he, he cried when his friend Lazarus was in the tomb, even though he knew in a little bit, he's going to say, Lazarus, come forth. Come on out here. You might have been stinking then, but you're not stinking no more. But because of the hurt he felt for that family, Jesus wept. The one other place that we see is, is when he looked upon the city of Jerusalem, and he looked there, and he knew the heart of the people there. He wept. He wept over his own people. And, and, and his expression of how he wanted to talk about his own people who would try so hard to kill him and they pushed to have him put to the cross. But he used a maternal term. I don't know if you ever caught this or not. But let's look at Luke 13, 34. And this is Jesus' words. He's saying, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem! You who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you. How often 
have I longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you are not willing. So we see Christ even using, I think, this view of the hen and the little chicks. And, uh, if you grew up on a farm, you know what I'm talking about. Don't mess with them little baby chickens or witties or biddies or whatever you call them where you come from. Baby chickens, you will get flogged. And Jesus said, oh, how long have I wanted to gather you under my wings like the mother hen. Mom, moms, grandmas, great-grandmas, we salute you today. We praise the Lord for you, and we, and we call your name blessed, as Proverbs 31 says. We love you all. We, we thank you for what you've meant in your family's life and for what you mean in the rest of our lives. But as to this greatest love, as to this greatest love which God desires for each of us, it is available to each and every one of us. It is only available to us because of the sacrifice given. It is not because we come to church. It is not because we memorize the Bible, a part of it. It is not because of any great things that we can do. It is not because we can be a good neighbor. It is because of what Christ has done for us that we could not do for ourselves because we cannot get good enough. We can never get good enough. But he paid the debt for us. As Andy said last week, uh, it was not a free gift because a great sacrifice was given. And he does give us that gift, but it was not free because Christ paid the debt that we owe. So my question for you is we, we've had a lot of focus on moms today, but I hope you've been able to focus on the greatest of loves, which is from the Lord that he gives to us through his son. So my question to kind of finish up today is, is, do you know him? Do you have a personal relationship with him? Not just know about him, but have that relationship with him. He desires that most of all for you. So if you've never or if you don't know for sure, you can have that relationship. You just have to ask him in, and he will come in. And he will help you in ways that, that you can't even fathom. The things that you might have a need that you're dealing with right now, some struggle that you have, some battle that's going on in your life, God is there for you for that, to help you, to give you clarity, to give you mercy, to give you grace, and to give you eternity with Him. He loves you so much. Invite Him into your heart today, and He will come in just as you are and live there forever.